Father Zach, thank you for the bountiful spread you have blessed us with today. For these are treasures that us mere mortals just do not deserve. And though you've been screwed over by powers even higher than yourself, you have always maintained an open and honest relationship with your fans, and you never spoke ill of those who wronged you. In Leonidas' name, amen. Why not? <laughs> you probably wouldn't have guessed it, but Zack Snyder is one of my favorite directors. And as we get closer to Zack Snyder's Justice League coming to HBO Max, I thought this would be a perfect time to go through and rank his films. But first, I want to set a few ground rules. I will not be including the documentary he's done, like the Superman 75th Anniversary short, or the straight to video Michael Jordan highlights. Wait, he made what? Stop it. Get some help. I'm also not going to be including any of the music videos that he's done or his short films like Snow, Steam, Iron. But if you haven't seen that, I suggest you check it out. It's all filmed on an iPhone. Link down below. <clears throat> I'm also not including 2017's Justice League either. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the list. Released in 2011, Sucker Punch is the fifth film he directed, and to me, it's kind of his weakest. The story is about a group of girls trying to escape a mental asylum, and to do so, they have to collect certain items, and the moments they're collecting these items, the entire world changes into these crazy, high-intense action scenarios. And these scenarios is when the movie shines. I'm serious, these sections are just so much fun to watch. And they're kind of bizarre and unique. For example, the first scenario is World War One, but the Germans are zombies, and one of the girls uses a mech suit to fight. It's pretty fucking sweet. Now, this isn't a terrible movie, but I think it just lacks substance with his characters and plot. This is one of the movies that people like to point to when they say that Zack Snyder is all style and no story. Because it has some great action set pieces and some amazing visuals, but it's pretty weak with the plot and characters. They almost feel like a vehicle to move you to the next action set piece. But overall, I think the movie's pretty fun, and every time they're in these scenarios, I was hooked. It was just the stuff in between that made me lose interest. If you want to experience the best parts of this movie, I just recommend checking out these sequences on YouTube. It'll save you about an hour. Up next is Dawn of the Dead. This was the first movie he directed, and it's definitely the oddest because it's so different from the work that he's known for. Now this is a remake of George A. Romero's classic of the same name, and a fun fact, George A. Romero himself helped write this movie, along with James Gunn. The more you know. Now this is one of the few horror remakes that I actually prefer over the original. What I love about this movie is that the attention is always focused on the zombies. It's about a group of survivors banding together in a mall to try and survive. It's action packed, it's gory, and it's a blast to watch. And in the zombie horror genre, it always stood above the rest, especially the ones in the early 2000s. I really enjoyed it and I usually end up watching it almost every Halloween. If you're looking for a good zombie flick, I recommend checking it out. Speaking of movies that we didn't know Zack Snyder directed, next is Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. This was an animated movie released in 2010 based off a book series that I never read. But I'm not worried about how well it adapted its source material, I instead worry about how good the movie is. And in that regard, it's pretty good. The story is about a young owl on a quest to find the Guardians to help stop an evil army that is taking over. So we follow the quest of the young owl trying to find the Guardians and stop the evil forces. That's a simplified version and overall, it's a pretty solid animated movie. For being over 10 years old, the animation and CGI looks really great. And it's chock full of some really impressive shots. Even animated, you can tell that Zack Snyder directed it. I'm serious, some of these shots pulled off just look really... Nice. You got some very likable characters, easy to follow, interesting story, and I enjoyed the movie a lot, but if there's one thing I can complain about, it's that I wish it was longer. By giving it 20 or 30 extra minutes, it would have given us more time with the characters and locations because this movie moves by at a fast pace. And it would have given us more of an epic feel. But overall, as it is, I really enjoyed the movie. Now, I might lose some of you on this next one. Watchmen. It seems to be one of those movies that people either love or hate. And most of the people that hate it are comparing it to its source material, which I completely understand, but for me, I look at it as a standalone movie, and in that regard, I enjoy the hell out of it. For being over 11 years old, it still looks great, and I really dig the style, the tone, the soundtrack. I love it all. Now, it's a big story, and it covers a lot, but here's the oversimplified version, without spoiling anything. The movie starts off with Warshock, a vigilante who is investigating a murder of a retired superhero. And then from there, the plot slowly evolves into trying to stop a potential World War 3. And the entire time, the movie serves as a dissection of the superhero genre. It takes place in an alternate 1985 timeline where superheroes have existed for decades, but recently they have been outlawed. I don't want to get too much into it, but if you haven't seen it, I recommend checking out the director's cut that's nearly three hours long. Out of all the versions available, I prefer this one. The only thing I could really complain about are just some of the fight scenes. Because the movie presents itself in a somewhat grounded reality, but when they're fist fighting, they're knocking each other across the room and jumping all over the place, it's just a little off-putting. Because they're humans, they're not 
actually super powered. But other than that, I think it's a really good movie. Now as an adaptation, that's a different story. Now with these last three, I wasn't sure what order to put them in. So you can organize these last three any way you want and I would probably agree with you. But here's what I went with. Batman vs Superman. Personally, it's probably my favorite movie of his. It explored the characters of Superman and Batman in a new interesting way not seen in previous movies. It asked questions like, how would the world react to Superman? How would Superman react to the world questioning and rejecting him? What if Batman never stopped fighting crime? How would 20 years of fighting crime and losing loved ones affect him? I did a video on BVS, so go check that out. Now the reason I placed it here on the ranking is because even though I love it, you really have to watch the Ultimate Edition to get the full experience. Unfortunately, the people in theaters who saw this movie got the chopped up slice version. And even though I do believe a lot of things can be inferred in the theatrical cut and doesn't actually need to be shown, I think that showing it would have cleared up a lot of confusion with the plot and would have been more received positively. So for that reason, I place it at number 3, but it's number 1 in my heart. Aww. Up next is Man of Steel. I gotta tell you, Superman action has never looked this good. Personally, it's my favorite live action Superman movie. And just like what Zack Snyder set out to do with BVS, he asks questions here that most adaptations of the character just gloss over or don't even explore. This movie humanizes him and lets us in on what Clark Kent thinks. It's his journey trying to figure out his place in the world. It's him discovering who he is, where he comes from, and what kind of man he wants to be. And the reason why I rank it above BVS, because unlike that film, this movie didn't get chopped up or cut for its theatrical release. So we all got to see Zack full vision for this movie. We also got Christopher Nolan to thank for that. He was one of the producers for Man of Steel, and thanks to his involvement we got to see Zack's full vision for this movie, with little to no interference from DC or Warner Brothers. And of course Hans Zimmer comes through with a perfect fucking score. And like I already mentioned, the action in this movie is fucking top notch. Yeah, I really enjoy this movie. I got no complaints. Love it. And finally, the movie that puts Zack Snyder on the map, 300. Yeah, I know it seems predictable to put this movie at number one, but I think it's damn near perfect. The movie accomplishes exactly what it sets out to do. It's not only about high intense stylish action, even though that's, you know, most of it. It's also about honor and standing for something. It's the story of Lee Nice and the Brave 300 going against a massive Persian army. And then we get to watch these super jacked guys slaughter their enemies. This is the movie that introduced us to Zack Snyder's signature style and I have zero complaints. And even to this day, I pop this movie in just to give it another watch. Okay, I got one one complaint. I wish it was longer. Fuck you, this movie's great. And that's gonna do it for my ranking of Zack Snyder's films. If you agree or disagree, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. And tell me how you would rank them. This list is gonna change after his release of Justice League next year. I'm just wondering if it's gonna be on the higher end or lower end of this list. Either way, I can't wait for it to come out. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a like on it. I'm Tex, and I'll catch you next time.